Playing in packed arenas, Jam on it was huge. That was a, a great time. Yeah. Uh, my family life growing up in Brooklyn was pretty cool. Um, we had a large family centered around my grandmother, um, West Indian family, mostly from Jamaica and Panama. I was my mother's only child, and I didn't know my father, but. Um, I didn't miss him but so much because I had so much good family, especially with my grandmother and my grandfather. What drew me to music is my mother listened to a lot of music. My mother loved music, and she still does. And um, she played a lot of different types of music, so I heard music all the time. Um, everything from, from jazz to R&B, soul to Broadway to um, African music. Hugh Masekela. I loved. Um, Carlos Santana, I loved. Um, Burt Bacharach and Hal David as songwriters, I loved. Donald Fagan from um, Steely Dan, I loved. Um, wow, I, I, could, I could go on a uh, hundred years, probably. We started out as a, as a Christian group, not Christian as re religious church music, but Christian as in Christianity, you know, bringing people to Christ and um, and um, talking about the problems of the world. It was our way of really showing the world how we felt about Christ and um, just exhibiting music through um, how we felt about God. So it was between the four of us and, and Ben and Bob being the musical um, guys of the group. Um, we got to, um, I guess, just show the, our love for the Lord. We were DJing in the parks back then, you know, and because we were DJing in the parks, you know, we had MCs in our crew, but everybody else, you know, most of the DJs also would write a few rhymes and get on the mic every now and then and say their rhymes. So I had my own rhymes. And I said I had my own rhyme book, you know, and I would get on the mic and say say my rhymes and all that. I had never, ever had any intention of recording a rap record. Never. I had a, a comic book character called um, Captain Cosmo that I had developed when I was younger. So I took that name, Cosmo, and there was a popular disco record called Mondo Disco. And I took the disco and I became Cosmo Disco. We formed what we called Jam On Productions that summer. Um, Al T. Tugger, <laughs> he, 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 and, he and David, the now Dr. Freeze, they had a crew together called Jam Brothers Incorporated. T was too young. T, T's a, a few years younger than us. And we're teenagers, so, you know, that means a hell of a lot more when you're teenagers. And, nah, man, we can't have this young guy hanging out. So we separated them. <laughs> And, and, and Doc Freeze and Quadro and me, Cosmo Disco, we became Jam On, Jam On Productions. We took the name Jam Brothers Incorporated and changed it around so Freeze would feel like he's part of the crew, you know, feel like an equal member. And Al T eventually joined Jam On Productions that summer as an MC. He was our first MC. So um, that's how Jam On Productions started. We were looking for an original sound and we were taking so many different influences. I mean, we were influenced electronically by Kraftwerk and Gary Newman and Jean-Michel Jarre. You know, so we were looking for an electronic sound, but we were also into the jazz, you know, so, so, so we added jazz flavorings to it. And we were also into funk, George Clinton. So, um... We mixed all that because we didn't care. We weren't following any rules. You know, neither of us were, were, were accomplished musicians who could read and write. You know, we were just putting stuff together. Wiki 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 is, is about ridding a town of whack rappers. That's what that song is about. 
If you listen to the song, you're, you're chasing everybody out of town, and the rappers are saying to the crew, yeah, you guys are bad, but you can't do this. Wiki, 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 which designates scratching on a turntable. You know, because that was the other thing about our crew, because we had started out as disco DJs. So we, most of us, some of us learned how to scratch, but most of us never bothered learning how to scratch because we knew how to rock a crowd. So we would blend, play the same records everybody else is scratching, blend, and kick their, kick their butts, you know, rock, rock, rock whoever was lined up against us in the park. When I first heard Jim on Revenge on the radio, it was amazing. I, I don't have anything else to compare it to except the birth of our children, I think. Um, it was exciting. We didn't know anybody that it had that happen to them. And you just think about all of the people that you listen to on the radio, the, the people that um, you idolized and worshipped and you just wanted to be like them. And all of a sudden, here's something that you were having fun with, something that you wanted just to you know show people you could do just for fun and it winds up on the radio the record company after we dropped um jam on revenge wiki wiki song and it had such success they wanted us to do a rap record i resisted it but it's what they wanted so they were bothering us and we said, okay, I'll do a rap record and I dug out my old rhyme book. So almost all of the rhymes for Jam on it, except for Chili B's rhymes, because I wrote those for him on the spot because he couldn't come up with any rhymes. Because like I said, he was a DJ just like me, but I had the rhyme book. So I wrote some rhymes for Chili B and then almost all of my rhymes with some alterations were rhymes that were as old as 1977 that I used to rock in the park. Chili B and I, we, we were more partners than friends. You know, um, we, we had an age difference growing up. It was the same thing with, you know, that I was talking about with, with Al T. You know, he was younger. So um, when we were in Thunder Funk together, we weren't, we weren't friends. We were just in the band together. You know, but we developed a good working relationship. Um, our styles uh, worked well, feeding off, against, uh, feeding off against each other. As a musician, he he was a natural. I remember when he was learning how to play bass because he he could play the bass, finger it, fine, but he didn't know how to slap. And this cat named AJ took him under his wing and taught him how to slap. You know, and um, he just picked it right up. Lady E's the love of my life. Um, it, it, it's funny, you know. We we met at my at my twentieth um, birthday party. This is, I, I I see this 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 little little chick, little skinny chick, because she was skinny then with an afro, smoking a cigarette, trying to look all cool. And I'm like, oh, I, I got to move on that. She compliments me in every way. She completes me. There's no two ways about it. You know, um, and honestly, I don't think anything that has happened positive for me would have happened without her. It, I wish everybody had the opportunity to work well with their spouses. You know, you always hear that, oh, gosh, you know, husbands and wives working together, that's not going to work. It's almost like the, you know, everybody hates their mother-in-law syndrome. It, it just isn't the way it is. Um, Cosmo's tough. He's a tough producer, but he tries to be fair. He loves the music so much that I don't get a pass. It's like some people that he's worked with, you know, some people can deal with him and some people can't, but he hears what he hears and he wants what he hears to be translated onto that tape because it's him. It's under his name. He knows that whatever he does, it's attached to him. And I think that he wants the best of every artist to come out in them too. Well, we're finishing a Nucleus album that I've been working on for seven years and the I, I feel so ashamed because I, I actually took a hundred pre-orders on it 
And these people have waited with such patience, you know, but um, I have a hard time putting out something I don't believe in. I'm also getting back into house music. What you, what you don't know, because you wouldn't know, is under my real name, Ben Senak, you know, we had, once we started doing independent pr production, I had a whole career as a house producer. And um, one of my EPs, Dream to Science, is being re-released on Monday. We have a show called Jam on the Groove. It's with my son, DJ Dog Train, and myself. Um, for the first hour, DJ Dog Train does mega mixes and he has to be heard to believe. It's on Global Funk Radio, www.globalfunkradio.com. That's every Saturday at 5 p.m. EST. And he spends the first hour, he, can, he, he might play disco, he might play house, he might play hip hop, he might play breaks. He might play anything, mixing any of that stuff together, freestyle, electro, you name it. He puts it all together and he does mashups and blends like you wouldn't believe. And then I play f jazz and funk for another hour. That's all right, the funk is here. That's right, if you're experiencing some extra funkiness coming out to a computer speakers right about Hopefully the future holds positive things, you know. Um, I'm going to always do music. Hopefully I'll get back to doing it prolifically again because um, I've slowed down a good bit. But um, I'm searching for inspiration and I'm trying to get back into it. But um, we're going to be we're gonna be here, you know, as Nucleus and as other entities. Going to get the stuff out, you know. It's a golden age for the independent producer now.